Good morning, you guys. Happy Tuesday. We're trying something new this week. I know I changed the time on you, but um, I have my twin sister visiting from California. I've got a full day with her ahead. And so I pulled the podcast a little bit earlier. And today's topic is super important. And I think it's one that you and I and everybody else in this world really needs to consider because the very foundational identity that all we all <clears throat> show up to life with um, and how you hold yourself as that identity is really largely based on your past, your conditioning, right? And for autoimmune patients, the identity that you hold really largely dictates your reactiveness to your autoimmunity. And contrary to popular belief, it's not all about the things that you do to heal, but the inner identity that actually dictates and perpetuates your autoimmune cycle. And in order for us to heal from the inside out, which is ultimately what you want, because you don't want a quick fix, band-aid approach, to your autoimmunity because you and I both know we need far more than just superficial approaches. The ebbs and flows of living with autoimmunity is real. We will get flares and life circumstances, stress happens, everything happens. And so we must uh, really address at the foundational level um, the identity that we hold and really consider where it's coming from first before tackling all the superficial things. I want you to always think about the yin to the yang. It's the things that doctors don't talk about. It's all the things that we tend to overlook in lieu of something that we can tangibly touch and feel. But a lot of the times, the perpetuating factors are very much live in our lives and you and I are navigating them every single day. For example, I was in a very <clears throat> toxic relationship and it was one of those marriages, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. It wasn't until I realized that I was holding myself, my identity that I held for myself was this victim mentality. I inherently just assumed that everybody should understand how I feel, that I am somehow handicapped because of my autoimmunity. I'm more tired, I'm more weak, I can't do all the things. So from my family, I expected them to understand me without really expressing really what I need. I don't even know how I felt. All I knew was that that bad things happened to me. I've never been sick in my life. And it was an adjustment for me to realize, oh my gosh, I have to live my life a sick person. I didn't know what all that looked like when I was younger, when I was diagnosed over 21 years ago. Now I have a solid understanding from experience and the ups and downs and the ebbs and flows. I can speak to the experience in retrospect. When I really look at my cycles of life, the identity that I held was that of a victim. Everybody should tailor to me. Woe is me. I'm broken. All the things that I held to as my identity was the very thing that was keeping me sick and stuck. It wasn't until I lifted and I realized I'm not a victim. I am actually a self-healing empowered, self-empowered healer, and I can heal myself. And I thoroughly worked on for the last decade of my life on really reprogramming my identity in that way that I really stepped into my power. So today, despite the fact that I don't know where things are going to go, there's a lot of uncertainty in life, but I'm better able to respond and meet my challenges with more wisdom and from a place of empowerment versus from a place of brokenness and victimhood. And as I treat my patients in autoimmunity, you know, it's, it's real. If you don't know what it's like to be sick, it's really hard for you to experience what that's like. 
the defeat that you feel, the hopelessness, the fear, the anxiety, all the things that come up, your brain goes to dramatizing all the things, the worst case scenario, and it kind of goes into this headspin. And it's like this hamster wheel that you can't get off of. And so I know that so well. And I used to think I'm crazy, I'm crazy, I'm crazy. And actually some doctors think we are crazy because of all the things. But little do we know that biochemically, all your thoughts create vibrational feelings in our body to affect our neuroendocrinological system, to affect everything physiologically. Everything is tangible, you guys. And that's why I'm speaking to you, really asking yourselves, how are you showing up? Who do you believe you are as a result of autoimmunity? Do you believe you're victim, you're broken, you're sick? Is that the identity that you hold every day? Because from that place of being sick, broken, and a uh, victim, you're not in a position of power to really truly help yourself. You're in a position of dependency, waiting for the savior, waiting for the answers, waiting for things to be scooped up for you versus you making things happen. When you work from a place of power and you work from a place of empowerment, you start to be fully responsible and you stop leaking power. Everything that happens in life, you take with a grain of salt, knowing that you've got your own back, that you don't need anybody else you take doctors' opinions, experts' opinions, all the things that you read, you now tailor it to whether it feels in alignment with you. So your inner compass now becomes the driving force for everything that you do. And I know we're talking about autoimmunity, and autoimmunity is an intolerance to yourself, right? And so I talk about in our transformational autoimmune program, that it's actually autoimmunity is an opportunity. It's a catalyst for transformation. It's like being stuck as a caterpillar and then we become butterflies. That transformative process from a caterpillar that crawls to a beautiful butterfly that flies and beautiful with wings and it's got liberation to do whatever it is, that's the transformation that is absolutely available to you. I didn't know it for a long time. I no longer live in fear. And I recognize the interpretation that I am not, um, the interpretation, hey, Sandy, um, hello, I, I will answer that in a minute. Um, the interpretations that I make about my life and all the circumstances that happen is something that I really need to recheck and reflect upon and then recognize it's the interpretations that I make and the assumptions that I make is going to set the trajectory for how I'm going to react or respond, right? And so I talk and teach a lot about, with my autoimmune patients, more important than me dictating what supplements, what diets, what testing, all the scientific superficial doings that we all seek for, I go beneath the surface to give them the navigation tools to really better manage their minds, to connect their mind to their body, to have this intuitive feel and learn what the feelings are, learn to metabolize your feelings because from feelings, we make choices to take actions that's going to serve us or harm us. And we do this every day. We do this every single day. We're making choices and interpretations. And it's as simple as a snap of a finger to let go of the interpretations that's not serving you and make better interpretations that serves us in the direction that we want to go. I've been studying quantum physics. I've been studying psychology, all the nutritional science, the physical medicine, the functional medicine, the yoga, all the energy, all the east to the west. 
and I've sort of compiled my work to really connect the dots. Nobody does that. Everybody stays in their lane and they have blinders on. They only want to see what they want to see. And I just want to open up the possibility that you are the only one that can heal. The switch is from the inside. If that switch is on, all the other things that you deploy to help you, whether it be functional medicine, acupuncture, chiropractic, physical therapy, all the holistic plus the medications, it can amplify the results. But unless that switch is on, nothing you do superficially, no matter how good, how sustainable it may be, it'll only be marginalized. You'll only get partial impact. The real work is in you managing your mind to step into your power, stop leaking that out, and fully evolve into the identity. Because you as the creator, you get to create the life, health, and relationships that you want. Three most important essential things that are not apart from each other is our relationship with ourselves dictates largely our relationship with our own health, our relationship with other people, and our relationship with our finances. Three important things, driving factors in our human life. Life is short, you guys, super short. I can't believe 21 years have gone with me living in autoimmunity. Times were hard, and now the experience has allowed me to show up with you weekly to inspire, motivate, and to really help you to see a great, greater good in all that we do. Because my work isn't about fixing or reversing autoimmunity so much as it is for us to really stop the unnecessary suffering that we come bring into this world with false sense of limiting beliefs that hold us stuck in our limited identities that we hold thinking that we're broken, living out of fear. And my mentor, Jim Fortin, says, you know, fear is idleness of will. And that's his favorite quote. And I truly believe fear is parasite to autoimmunity. And I lived in fear for so long that I don't want any one of you to subject yourselves to living in fear. It's time for us to step into our power and recognize that we are the self-empowered healers, and that's the ultimate goal. I want to give you the tools for life so that you can heal yourselves rather than be dependent on others or programs or supplements or diets and waiting for the next best thing to help you heal from the outside in. Healing is an inside job. Always remember that. And you are the self-empowered healer. And I want to share with you next Monday at 11 a.m. or starting at 11 a.m., June 14th through the 17th, I'm hosting a free virtual autoimmune retreat in my private group called the Tribe of Autoimmune Health Rebels. The link is below for you to sign up. You'll get the workbook on Friday, all the meditations, all the yoga and workshops with me retreats with the topics to change and shift the way you think about your health in a whole different way. And I will give you all the tools, the diets, and all the things that you can follow to really start to feel better and recognize, yes, healing is an inside job and I can do this. I'm more than qualified. Hey, Laura, long time no see. So Sandy asked, this is off topic, but not talking not taking the shot was the right decision for lupus patients, right? Well, Sandy, it's a personal choice. If I were to go back, I would have probably waited, honestly. <clears throat> I did write about this. I do think it gave me a little bit of a flare with my lupus because of the vaccine. And I know Laura Flynn is also um, kind of taking back and lots of my patients are waiting. And I leave that up to you. Um, I've had autoimmune patients that had really no symptoms, and then I've had others that really got flared up. And so, and we don't know what sets them up. It's a host of a lot of things. Your uh, chronicity, your phase of autoimmunity, where you are, your lifestyle, your genetic makeup, all the things plays into it so much that I feel like 
we're going to be establishing herd immunity. Just be careful. Everybody else is getting vaccinated. It sort of safeguards you so you don't have to expose yourself to the vaccine, if that makes sense. And then always practice hygiene, always. And just wait a little bit longer. You've waited this long is would be my personal recommendation if you were my friend or family, knowing what I know now. Um, and on the flip side, I have a lot of family members that choose to have the freedom so they get vaccinated and they're just fine. They don't have auto autoimmunity. So it's hard for me to say yay or nay. I've read both um, and it can be completely safe, but then it can totally flare you off as well. And I know both sides of the coin. So again, it's your personal choice. But if you were a friend, my close friend, and we we're having coffee together, I would say, you waited this long, I would think, wait. But also, I also want to offer up the work is in you listening to your inner voice, see what feels right for you. And almost always, that's the answer for you. So always approach it from that angle. I hope that that's helpful. I know I'm being very whatever. But you know, I'm not about being right or wrong. It's what's best for you, right? And so that's what this work is all about. Thank you for tuning in, you guys. And I will see you guys all next week, starting Monday at 11 a.m. in my private group. Whitelist our group or whitelist my email. Make sure that you sign up so that you get all the things. You're welcome, Sandy. I hope that that helped. Um, and I'll see you guys all in the group for the virtual retreat. Bye for now. Have a great day.